Today, School Eagles take on the Central Bears, part of high school soccer's Thursday night. I'm Darren Smith. Stay tuned for all the action. This Thursday night, right before the weekend, high school soccer back out here on a Thursday night. The Central Bears trying to pick up their fourth win of 1994. 3 2 and 1 for the Central Bears, and Day School looking for their first here in 94. They are 0 and 5. Day School falling short to Castle 5 1 back on Tuesday. So set for 80 minutes on this Thursday night. Day School in blue and Central in the white and black will go this way from the back for the Day School Eagles. Some familiar names back from a year ago, and um, also some new talent, including one out of Iceland, and more on him in a minute. From the back on up for Day School, Tom. Kegelman will be the sweeper, and Kenny Kimball will be doing the stopping, along with Jay Dade and Josh Brown. At midfield, Mike Williams and Ben Sharp. Honey, good Johnson. He is out of Iceland, and Dave Worsner. And also the strikers tonight, Paul Batista and Nathan Sharp, two veterans back here for the Eagles. Adam Ellenstein getting a six start in goal tonight. Uh, 3.40. Goals against average for the Central Bears. Again, some new names with some uh, fresh young talent for the Bears in 1994, including a brand new head coach, the name of Greg Harris, Central from the back, Josh Willis, along with Rembley Coggleton and Carl Riddle. At midfield is Robards, along with Nick Lannert, Moss Barker and Wes Burns, Mitch Lannert and Travis Hudak, the strikers, and Broderhausen. That is John Broderhausen in goal tonight for the Central Bears. Central in day school. We're back with the opening kickoff after this timeout. Suffering from aches and pains? Make MedFirst your first choice. With over 100 years combined experience in spinal rehabilitation and pain management, your relief is our first concern. MedFirst, make us your first choice. For first-rate care, make MedFirst your first choice. Qualified orthopedic physicians, general practitioners, and state-of-the-art methods combine to give you the best well-rounded care, including school and sports physicals. Open six days a week. MedFirst, make us your first choice. Since 1913, our family helping your family with purchasing a home. Since 1913, Helfrick Insurance has been the independent agent for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. For a fast comparison quote, call the Helfrick Agency today. Good protection and prompt claim service. Helfrick Insurance, coverage you need at a price you can afford. I go to Coke Soccer Field. I'm Darren Smith. Day School in Central again right before the weekend as we uh, begin our weekend late on a Thursday night. Again, Central looking for win number four of the season and Day School looking for uh, win number one. Like I said, some uh, new talent this year for the Day School Eagles. They will be in blue with a new head coach by the name of Musad Kusari who takes over for Tom Dragon. Dragon, of course, still involved with Day School Athletics. He is the athletic director. But Masood Kusari in his first year with the Day School Eagles and I talked about Greg Harris in his first year with the Central Bears. We are just underway on this Thursday night. And again, day school in blue and central in white. As they work into the far wing, some good talent here on this day school team. Like I said, they've improved, I think, a little bit from last year as they played central pretty tough the other night. The first is a roller that time on John Brodehausen. Welcome to the broadcast. Uh, yeah, a little late tonight. Uh, there's, Warren Disler. There's, there's a story. And there, and, there, and there always is a story, and I cannot wait to hear this one. As central drives it, dump it in through the back. Two backs actually bunch up, and Day School bunching up a couple times back on Tuesday night when Castle uh, got the best of them. Central tries to control it for the first time, and they'll leave it right here on the wing. Central moves in, and they got a couple of good ones this year, and Burns burns that time on Adam Ellenstein. Warren Disler joining me, like I said, a little bit late. I can't wait for this story. <laughs> Traffic? Traffic's my first guess. That's just part of it. That's just part of, part of it. Not, not an accident, I hope. Oh, no, no. It's called uh, one of my employees being sick. <laughs> I to find up. someone to come in, and that happens to us. A wreck on the Diamond Avenue. Central tries to work it in back through the wing and over the end line. Central will come with the first corner. So Warren Dishler joins me. Okay, a little bit late, and these things happen. Central and day school here on this Thursday night. They work it back in front of the six-yard box and back outside the 18. You know, you and I saw day school a little bit the other night uh, while we were out here watching another, and at the, the corner of the eye, you see another game. Day school didn't look that bad at times the other night, Warren. No, and especially against uh, Castle, who uh, has a uh, uh, highly... Uh, a reputed team this uh, this season um, held them scoreless in the first half and uh, finally gave way probably uh, uh, conditioning uh, 
kind of maybe ran out of gas, probably put everything they had into it in the first half of action against Castle, but played them the heads up for uh, 40 minutes. Yeah, and um, Dace Blues in a couple of close ones. I mentioned they were 0 5. They only lost 3-2 um, to Henderson in modern day 2-1. Castle beat them 5-1. They were blanked by Harrison 4-0, and Wright's beat them by a score of 4-1. As mentioned, 3-2 in one year for the Central Bears, but a story behind those losses also. They lose the two top 10 teams at the time in Castle and Memorial. They have beaten Boonville North in Mount Vernon. They tied Washington a couple of weeks ago. Back on the inside, Wes Burns. What are you going to hear a lot of this year in Wes Burns? He's a co-captain this year, and already with three goals, that's one behind the leader, Lannert, Mitch Lannert. And uh, he will do a lot of scoring this year, Wes Burns. In his senior year, and again, co-captain for the Central Bears. Burns back in front of the six and try to go wing to wing. Mossbacher across, actually just shanked it. And again, field wide is Day School. Tries to control through the back. I watched Day School a little bit last year, and um, that's one thing I think they did do well. They weren't necessarily winning midfield, but their backs were very good. And that was the same old storyline, I think, for Tom Dragon's teams the past couple of seasons. Always a little strong in the back. And uh, they're going to just knock it away and not keep their keeper Maybe, maybe so busy, which has been the case uh, more often than not. No Kearney this year. Although Kearney went back to day school, he decided not to play soccer. So Adam Ellenstein again in goal. 400 minutes coming in and 17 goals allowed. He has 82 saves so far at 94. And again, a 3.40 goals against average. From midfield, again move the Bears. Jeff Memmer. Very conditioned, conditioned very hard, I should say, over the summer in members. He tries to dump it in, and again, it's blocked and knocked back out by Jay Dave. Like I said, some new names here with the Eagles, but some familiar ones as well. As they try to work it through the middle, Paul Batiste is a familiar name. He's the one who can work you out of uh, tight spaces in a hurry. Starting in his sixth game here with day school. Chance for the Bears, and it's Ellenstein. And just missing that Travis Hudak as Hudak came inside the six. Actually, that was Ellenstein who even robbed Hudak of a chance. That's right, and one thing that uh, has been uh, evident in just about every uh, soccer game that we've televised so far this season is the team that comes out at the beginning of the first half, controls midfield, and attacks and spends uh, more time in uh, the other team's defensive end is the one that ultimately takes the lead uh, early and uh, so far has hung on to that lead to, to win each game. And right now, Central is uh, controlling uh, that. Uh, situation. Yeah, from midfield on up, it was day school maybe in the opening minute. And from the far wing, again, move the Bears. Bears, again, looking for win number four here in 1994. And off of the far wing, that is uh, Dan Hatt. He continues to improve. Um, not a uh, good, skilled sophomore, not a bad player. Talking to uh, Greg Harris earlier today, he's one that uh, is very impressed with in Hatt. Had again trying to control and knock it back in front. Actually, there's two there for day school, including Josh Brown, third year varsity player. And Brown, they drop it inside the six. It's quickly knocked out of there by Kenny Kimball. And Kimball in his third year with the day school Eagles. Not a very big school, as we all know, the Eagles. I think their enrollment is just under 100 students. Um, so they are, I don't want to say stuck with who they've got, but they don't have as much pickings, let's say, as a central high school. Yeah, 100 uh, students total. And when you take a look at, uh, like in football, in the, the classes, it has to do with male enrollment, and uh, I would think that if they're uh, under 100, then they're certainly uh, right around 50 in, uh, in the male cap. Chance for the Bears, and there it was. Brandon Robards has his third goal of 1994, able to beat him on the near post. Adam Ellenstein, a first time, 34-33 left in our first half. Story there is uh, Central uh, came out of the gate, uh, putting an awful lot of offensive uh, pressure on uh, Day School, keeping the ball in uh, Day School's defensive zone inside the 18-yard line. They must have had three or four uh, centering uh, passes that uh, didn't get through. Been working uh, both the wings into the center, and that time it was a breakaway for uh, the goal. Into the sixth minute, Brandon Robards has Central on the board. We'll take a timeout on a Thursday night. This game being brought to you in part by Taroni's Pizza. You're watching high school soccer Thursday night on TV 52. Mention pizza, and one name keeps coming up. Taroni's, for years known as the city's best pizza. With two locations, Taroni's is the perfect place for groups of two or 52 to get together for great pizza. Come enjoy Taroni's appetizers, sandwiches, or their famous 29-inch party pizza in a warm and relaxing atmosphere. No time to dine in? Why not call Taroni's for a carry-out order? Both locations are open seven days a week. The next time you go out to eat, remember Taroni's Pizza. It can't be beat.
365 days a year. For more than a century, our physicians, nurses, technicians, and staff have dedicated themselves to one common goal, making the critical difference. Deaconess is the right decision. Alongside Warren Distler, I'm Darren Smith, back out of Coke Soccer Field. In the sixth minute, Brandon Robards and why we were away, day school, put the threat quickly on John Broderhausen. Almost got a hitter in the, in the goal mouth, and uh, the, uh, the goalkeeper came out and, uh, and smothered that. But it was close. That's Broderhausen, and uh, this year uh, we'll be doing... Uh, we get most of the calls, I should say. Backup goalkeeper this year is that of another senior in Aaron Beck. So it's central here on the outset in the sixth minute. Broderhausen able to stop a threat after the Brendan Robards goal. Again, he has his third here in 1994. 32-50 here to go in our opening half. You know, it's unfortunate that uh, day school's record really doesn't exhibit uh, how close uh, the matches have been that they've played in so far. And that's what everybody sees is, uh, is the one loss tie record. Uh, they've been in just most, about most of the games that uh, they've played in. Again, uh, day school at 0-5, but uh, getting back to that Castle game the other night, they played Castle a lot tough in that first 40, actually throughout the game before falling short. A tough second half, and again, Castle scores in bunches and beats the Eagles. Five to one. And then Henderson County, Henderson County beat Castle. Didn't they know they beat Memorial? Actually, I think that Henderson County game, what you think about was a tie. I think a tie between Castle. Castle and Henderson County. Yeah, they played in uh, Henderson County. Quite tough. One that worked in favor of the Bears. And win the calls from midfield here on the early outset. And they will have five just inside of the 18. Bears, uh, not bad a couple of years ago. Kind of a downslide uh, the past couple of seasons. Not, nothing bad, though. They've struck around the middle of the pack for the most part and trying to regain uh, to stick around the top this year with the Memorials and the, the Castles and the get put in the Harrisons also off to a great start. We'll drop it back inside the box. Good chance for the Bears, but right on top of the six that time is Adam Ellenstein. Yeah, getting back to the Bears, like I said, um, they've had a kind of an up-and-down season the past season and a half, so to speak, but... Uh, it's a team that has some good athletes. I mentioned the senior leadership this year with the Bears. I think that begins with Broderhausen and continues through a couple of others, including uh, Nick Lannert, uh, his brother Mitch, the sophomore, and, uh, and a couple others. Correction, Mitch is a junior. But uh, there's some good talent here on this Bears team. All right, now Central is uh, kind of working the uh, pitchy, uh, pitching wedge uh, situation from... Uh from deep to try to chip the ball into uh, inside the 18-yard marker, hoping that somebody can come up on it. So far, nobody's been able to approach the ball. Tom Kegelman, good athlete. Kegelman, all he could do was clear back to midfield, but the Bears control here on the outset. Knocked forward by Josh Brown. Like I said, third-year varsity in Brown, who also plays hockey. Uh, he and Kegelman, good hockey players with the Day School Eagles. Not the Day School Eagles hockey team, but uh, over at Swanton Rice Rink. You know, there's a lot of similarities uh, between soccer and hockey, if you stop and think about it. Both have the uh, offside situation. Of course, in hockey, you have to uh, judge that by the blue line. But uh, the, the type of play and the way that you set up and the way that you uh, use patience and passing, uh, basically the same game. You know, I was talking to Bill Vee, uh, Bill Vee Sr. Um, a couple of weeks ago, he compared offensively um, soccer to that of basketball, and he worked it in so as a five-on-five five and how you approach that from one sliding in on the wing or what have you. But I never heard that analysis quite before, and uh, Bill Vee Sr. did that a couple of weeks ago. Day School dumps it in. A header is just knocked back out, and Central survives that attack. Day School, that's the second time they've been dangerous from either wing. That's right. It looks like uh, maybe the momentum might be switching a little bit on the shock of the, uh, the first goal scored by Central. They try to work it. Nice save on the near touch. All they can do is clear. And again, back here is Kegelman. Kegelman again dumps towards midfield. But it's been Central's midfield here in the opening 10-plus minutes. Dump it in. A couple of speedsters here for the Bears, including Travis Hudak. Hudak in two battle here on the near touch. Hudak looking for it. will have the throw in. Yeah, in basketball, you uh, you have pick and rolls, and it's awfully hard to uh, to set up a pick and roll in, in <laughs> soccer. I would say, yeah. Although you do use screening. Yeah, you do. Uh, more often than not. Robards. We dish it off on the inside, actually outside, and Burns. Burns goes back to the top and just on top of the 18. Nice job here, actually, on the outside again by Josh Brown. But all he can do is clear over to the day school bench. Again, Central with another uh, opportunity to center that ball dangerously uh, across the front of the goal. And uh, every time they center that, that uh, is an opportunity for Central to score. And, uh, looks like day school is going to have to shut that off in the corners. They're not being aggressive uh, defensively there, and they're allowing Central to uh, kick that ball uh, right across the front of the goal. There's there again with the throw, and it's dropped back, but it's intercepted along the way. That is Mitch Lannert. Lannert's off to a great start. Mitch actually has four goals to lead. That is wide, actually over the crossbar. 
Another chance for Robards in front as he looks for his second. The Atalantis this year have done quite well for the Bears. I talked about Mitch being the goal-scoring leader with four so far. Probably a leader by example when you're talking about the junior Mitch Lander. And of course, uh, brother Nick, who's not really 100% as of yet uh, with a knee injury. But he's a great shooter as well. He's still looking for his first goal here at 94. 12 minutes into this one. Central and day school, and the Bears up by one. Gagelman on the clear again, only back to midfield, where the Bears have continued to control. Mossbacher on the far side. You know the story on Mossbacher. Matt, of course, the baseball player. Good athlete, good student as well, they tell me. And he already has two goals this year for the Bears. Well, that's the second ball across the fence. I don't know if they have any more game balls. Yeah, how many balls do you bring to a game? Two over at actually Harrison's baseball field. Well, they shuttle in another. We'll take a timeout. 27.45 here left on this Thursday night. And in the first half, it's Central and Day School on TV 52. Oh, no. Gucci, Gucci, goo for the eighth time. Come on, guys. Get serious. I got plans. College? Career? Ooh, it, kiddo. They have Old National helping you with a wide range of investment options and professional advice, so your college is set. Shows you what 160 years of experience can do. College is set? Hey, kid, life can be fun at your bank for life. Old National. I'm so happy I could cry. Your family needs protection. The financial protection of good, solid life insurance. Remember the agent who can put it all together for you. Financial protection that fits your family. Remember the agent who's there to look in on you tomorrow. Remember, State Farm sells life insurance. Stop by or call Jack Kleemeyer for all your insurance needs. Across the Lord Expressway from Kipley on May 8th. With Warren Distler, I'm Darren Smith. Play on at Coke Soccer Field on a Thursday night with the Central Bears. Lead the Day School Eagles by a score of one to nothing. Always good every now and then to take a look at that Day School. One outside the SIAC. We'll take a look at Day School again on the 19th. Where they take on the North Huskies. And of course, not during basketball season. Which is becoming a tradition over in uh, New Harmony. We'll see uh, Day School and New Harmony basketball also in late February. Central again controls the midfield with a one nothing lead. Three up here for the Bears and a good chance. Four splits of that far side for the Eagles. As they try to work and try to find some room. Ben Sharp, speaking of basketball, as it's crossed right back here in front. A lot of good two and three sport athletes, as you expect, in a smaller school for day school. Yeah, there's another perfect example of day school allowing uh, Central to advance the ball up on the wing. And uh, that time, uh, speed was not the issue, but uh, kind of a staggered start-stop approach to uh, driving the ball deep. And then getting that ball uh, centered again, again, uh, no Central player there to come in and score, but day school cannot uh, continue to allow that to occur. And I mentioned being beat to the ball, particularly here in the midfield. They're also not winning the job on the wings. Again, all he can do, Kegelman is clear back to midfield. That time a connection pass to David Wussner, second-year varsity player, um, who also is a basketball player with the Eagles. Like I said, you'll find a lot of two- and three-sport athletes here with the Eagles. Not just this year, but in years past. So row in here again by Robarts. We're going to do day school on the Rapites, huh? Yeah, Rapites coming up. I believe February 24th, if I can really take a look ahead here. There's again Mossbacher far side. Nice stop and cut in front. That was all Mossbacher. Had two in front of him. Pulled it back and not let it go on, Edel on Ellenstein. Yeah, it could have been a surprise for Ellenstein. It looked like he might try to kick that ball more out towards the front, hoping that uh, one of his teammates might come up and uh, uh, try the attempt on goal. But instead, he uh, kicked that around his defender and uh, almost got by. A school keeps some great stats throughout the season. That was save number 87 already in just uh, six games for Adam Ellenstein. Gives you an idea of how much work he's actually seen here in his opening five-plus games now. A school again tries to work it through the middle, and there he is, Hani Gutsonsen out of Iceland. Good Johnson on the far side. He's slow to get up, actually, through the middle. A head or miss, and all I can do is clear Wusner here to the near side. Trying to find room. It'd be interesting to know where uh, when ice seats because I know it gets dark awfully early this time of year. Up yeah, you're right. Honey Good Johnson, where's the number eight here for the day school Eagles? And talking to Tom Dragon earlier, like I said, he knows his soccer, so very much involved. Um, with all the athletic programs out there. He says, Honey Good Johnson just may be um, day school's best player. Uh, another foreign exchange student, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Iceland for Good Johnson. Um, fans may remember Trolls Bunez um, from last year. 
We're an exchange student from a year ago. Uh, not bad also. Brunez could play forward, back, and he played some keeping last year also. They dump it back in the zone and trying to find some room. They try to connect the pass there to Clint Hawkins. Who's on his first year of the varsity. And Dace Logan tries to control midfield and Paul Batista. Gets it off on the wing and Worsner. Worsner. Getting beaten on the wing, and that's good hustle through the back that time. You really want to credit uh, Josh Willis for his call for the baseball player and uh, now a combo soccer player. Then day school on that exchange, showing excellent footwork and uh, working that ball uh, on a steal from the wings and advancing it up. That's a good job by Willis here on the uh, near side just to force the throw in. Day school just has their second so far in almost 20 minutes played. 17 minutes gone here in our opening half. So the Eagles with the throw in again, and Clint Hawkins. They say he's a power lifter. He's in his first year playing soccer. Back at midfield, and Kenny Kimball again, with his third year with the Eagles, tried to set up one of three in front of him, including Paul Batista. Batista's probably your strength up front. I mentioned it. Good Johnson. Batista's another who's going to lead the Eagles in 94. Back comes Burns, and the co-captain takes it back up the wing with three to beat here, actually, on the near side. Burns recapitalizes. Burns, who had it, lost it, and Kegelman only to tap it out, throw in here for the Bears. In that instance, Burns would have been much better off kicking the ball uh, across the sideline and out of bounds rather than try and take control and uh, just give them a throw in and regroup. <laughs> Burns here as it comes around the end line. A nice job, actually, for... Travis Hudak to try to save before it went over the end line. Central fans remember uh, brother Todd Hudak, who played a couple of years ago. The save for Travis, and again talking to Greg Harris uh, earlier today. I said that Travis Hudak, um, similar like his brother, is probably an underrated goal scorer. So far this year, he has three. So pretty soon he's not going to be underrated anymore. Uh, this is going to be looking out for him, I think, before the season's done. Is three underrated? I guess for his his potential, maybe, you know, on the basis of his own coach. Maybe. He's expected to pick up some of the scoring this year. Yeah, indeed. Travis Hudak has three. I mentioned Leonard has four. And Wes Burns has also three goals on the year. Moss Walker has a couple. Now Robards has three. He picked up his third in the sixth minute of this game. Cleared off to the near touch side. And again, Central has the throw in. In typical day school, you're not going to outpower many teams, or, and you have some speed here, but you're usually uh, out-talented by a little bit, and that's because of the enrollment. Day school can just clear. That time they steal through midfield. Paul Batista works it back up, and he has two splits on that far side. He's trying to find room in Nathan Sharp. Sharp was open only momentarily, and it's going to be brought back through the back. Off to the wings. One of two up there, including, again, Josh Willis. And off the near touch line again. Finally, another throw in here for the Eagles. Although Central is spending uh, a lot more time on, uh, on the offensive uh, side of things than uh, day school. It looks like day school may have uh, made a move to uh, even things out a little more. Not as uh, many uh, crossing uh, uh, passes for Central in the last couple of minutes. Worsner wishing he maybe had that one back. They'll try again. Jay Dade he played uh, soccer or did not play soccer last year. Remember Jay Dade from, uh, from basketball season. That's a fade here away. with the throwing. Yeah, basketball season not that far away. Well, so it would seem. September's flying by, by the way. See that the Pacers announced their uh, little preseason uh, game here. Yeah, October 20th. I uh, appreciate the last one was that of Josh Willis. Now that was accidental. And the second whistle, I didn't think we were going to see a card, but that was definitely accidental, and Josh Willis didn't particularly care for it. But you're not going to go kick somebody in the head. No. Central again controls back through midfield. Robards with a goal in the sixth minute, trying to find room on the far wing. Nice shot. Back over to Mossbacher. And Mossbacher here works in the corner. Last time, Mossbacher came from here tough. Mossbacher that time trying to beat Ben Sharp. Sharp, here's your probably most experienced on this team in his fourth year. Sharp tried to go through a couple. Day School survives another as Kenny Kimball works it back towards midfield. And Day School again with another touch up through the middle and broken up there by Drebitz. Through the back, Nick Leonard. Cross in front, header just missed. Travis Hudak looking for number four here in 94. Didn't miss by much. Another cross for uh, Central. Uh, two straight times they came down into the left wing. 
uh, the previous time. Day School uh, rode him off on the ball and gained control of it, only to lose it uh, about halfway towards midfield. And uh, they're going to have to uh, to make those steals, and make those tackles, and uh, take control of the ball and get it across midfield, or else Central's going to score again on them quickly. Halfway through our first half, and Central up by a score of one nothing. Equipment adjustment, actually. J. Dade in front of the 18. They stop and pause for that, and again back will come the day school Eagles. Again, Adam Ellenstein, the keeper this year for the Eagles. Under first-year head coach, Masood Kasari. Getting his sixth start in goal tonight in Ellenstein. Yeah, some people thought when uh, Kearney returned to day school, he played for modern day last year, he'd also pick up soccer again, but uh, Kearney said no. He was uh, finished with um, high school soccer, at least, to continue to play in the select leagues. Off to the far wing again. Nathan Sharp tries to work it back inside the box. He's got two there for the day school Eagles, and a missed header opportunity. Best chance maybe for day school as they drive it back, but off a deflection, it's Robards here through the middle of the pack. Yeah, both uh, shots on goal for day schools have uh, primarily uh, come from uh, two headers, and uh, they have not had a clear kick yet. yet. Chance again here on the far wing to move up here for the Bears, but you got four again to beat on that far wing. Some extra room again for Mitch Lannert. Lannert looking for another one, and it's broken up by Kegelman. The experience of having a Tom Kegelman back there, he is so valuable to the day school backs. I think Lannert may have uh, waited a little bit too long. Uh, he was uh, wide open coming in from the wing, decided to take it as far as he could, missed an opportunity to get a shot off. So Kegelman may have saved that one, and Lannert again looking for, uh, actually Lannert looking for his fifth. Amazing, he's the goal-scoring leader with four so far. So the throw in, another chance here for the Bears. Now playing in the first 23 minutes, the Eagles. Travis Hudak drops it back. Three inside the box right now for the Bears. A nice move again by Moss Parker. Moss Parker, I think he controls the ball better than anybody I've seen uh, so far here in the opening weeks. Not bad in uh, Moss Parker. One of the few times that uh, Dave was able to uh, uh, outrun uh, Central with the ball. In front, this header opportunity. Again, Burns, nice move by Burns, and the shot is wide. Missed on the near post. Burns a second time on Ellenstein. Burns with a bad angle has had to really place that ball perfectly in the upper right-hand corner, and it sailed over the crossbar by a uh, good two feet. Yeah, Burns also expected to do a lot of scoring this year for first-year head coach Greg Harris. Yeah, Burns, one of the co-captains this year, along with Brandon Robards. And again, Burns has three goals already. 16.55 here left on our Thursday night of uh, high school soccer. Didn't have a bad game the other night between um, Bossy and uh, Modern Day. Modern Day kept us uh, guessing maybe in the second half of that game, but a much better second uh, 40 minutes. But uh, not, not a bad game, and you expect uh, two teams here tonight to put on uh, maybe a similar show, but right now one nothing in favor of Central. I believe that every game that we've uh, we've televised, the uh, team scored first went on to win the, uh, the match. Yeah, good point. That could be a new stat. We'll oh, score sure. first on TV, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's, uh, that's going to change. That's going to be an important one, right. <laughs> I'm trying to think in Memorial Castle, it was uh, Castle scored first in that. Yeah, the only yeah. game on the goal, actually, was, uh, was out of a penalty kick. one nothing Castle a couple of weeks ago. Castle and Harrison lead the pack here into week number three. Maybe a showdown next Thursday night, a battle of the unbeatens. You will see Harrison and Castle one week from tonight. Chance again on the wings, and that is blown wide over the crossbar. But getting back to uh, our opening three weeks of soccer, I think little surprise who you expect to be around the top, a uh, Harrison, a Castle, a Memorial, are. And that'll uh, be early season showdown again coming between uh, Castle and uh, Harrison next Thursday night. We'll get our first look at the Warriors. That's right. And uh, a lot of these teams uh, uh, fighting for respect and uh, uh, want to get up there in the, in the top of the mid-pack. And uh, that's primarily uh, what we're seeing here uh, today with uh, Central. Chance again for the Bears. Nice move again here by Mitch Lannert. Lannert trying to get by a couple. A little mixed up that time. Uh, two coming together. Clint Hawkins. Probably one you don't want to mess with with day school. Like I said, Hawkins is a uh, power lifter. I, I wouldn't want to mess with him. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a, a tough sport. I mean, it's just pure strength. Yeah. Something it's, not, it's not a clean and jerk. It's just how much total weight you can uh, you can yeah. lift up to your waist. I've, I've seen him do it. I, I can't. So. That and bench pressing, I, I can't uh, fathom. That's, the, that's why you and I sit up here. Talk about them. Burns through the middle. Central up 1-0 in the six-minute row bars. Here again is Mitch Lannert. Lannert actually never got to him. Broken up through the middle by Honey Goose Johnson. Central trying to work the wings again. They've done well, like I said, they only control the middle here on the outside. They've been controlled or controlling uh, either side. Come on, Jake. Oh. Lannert. 
trying to find room. A lot of stop and go, actually, in the past five minutes or so. This is the 20-minute mark. Speaking of lifting, I've uh, developed this ability to, like, lift bags of potato chips. I see. Yeah, me to too. Chest. You and me both. Coffee cup to my lips. Yep. 12 ounce cokes, they, they always seem to work. They get lighter though, so 12 ounce cokes. <laughs> yeah, they do, especially when you keep drinking them. Try to find Robards. I don't think Robards is expecting that when Robards comes in, but that's going to be ruled offside. 14 and a half year to go here on our opening half, and uh, a chance to showcase day school tonight with the Central Bears. Offsides ruling once again. There must be a defender between uh, the uh, the goal mouth and uh, and the ball, other than the uh, the goaltender on those uh, those passes. And that's what the call is. Yeah, just one of the rules that I think a lot of people just don't understand or just find it hard to understand. Soccer, and I've mentioned this before, is not as hard to understand it as people think. So many people become in, uh, intimidated by it, by the people who've been around it a long time, but it's not all that tough. Then you have the individuals that want to do away with that ruling so that there's more scoring. But then it changes the game. Chance again, Burns. Third opportunity for Burns here on the near wing as he drove it right into Ellenstein. Save number 90 on the year for Adam Ellenstein. Like I said, he's seen a lot of action here now in about five and a half games. Ellenstein doing an excellent job of uh, defending the, uh, the the wide angle. The only Gore scored uh, was, uh, uh, he was screened out on that. It came straight at him. But uh, he covers uh, the corner of the goal mouth extremely well. well Ellenstein's seen plenty of action. I mentioned Matt Haney seeing a lot of action too, which made him a great keeper over the years. Haney saw so much action in his first two years, more than probably he'd like to talk about, but it made him a tough, good goalkeeper. Ellenstein already in his senior year. Driving those are tricky. There's Ellenstein deep inside his own goalie box. So Ellenstein has another, and that one came from far out. That shot would not drop. It uh, started low, stayed low, and I thought that it would have hit the ground uh, uh, maybe about uh, 10 to 12 feet in front of the goalie, but it just kept going and going. 27 minutes gone here in our opening half, and Central up on day school by a score of one to nothing. Two on that far wing. Try to work it back on the inside. Again, Aaron Beck will be doing the backup goalkeeping when Rodehausen is not there. Three sport athlete Beck. Cross country wrestling and of course here with soccer. Beck worked that last one on the far wing. Of course, uh, in your uh, post game interview with uh, Haney the other night, he says he loves to have shots. Yeah, he does. The more shots, uh, the more he likes it. But you know, the coach isn't going to think that way. Gets in front, but out comes Broderhausen. I think the more you see, uh, yeah, obviously, the better you're going to get. Journey, I mentioned, who was the goalkeeper the first uh, two years for day school. Actually saw a lot of his work uh, in select soccer, but uh, saw plenty of action in his first two years here with the Eagles. Back through the middle. Central again trying to win this game. A little bit better though, day school, but Central has another one through midfield. They try to connect to Mitch Lannert. Lannert had it only for a moment, cleared back in by George Brown. They try to set up Batista, and Batista in from the inside. Batista may be helped out with Ben Chase. Behind him, Batista tries to stay and at least knock it forward before it's cleared again. Central trying to work it, blowing on the far side. Actually, I believe the last attack may have been Aaron Beck. If that is the case, day school will have their first corner. Yeah, it went off uh, the uh, central defender's head. That was a hard kick ball, and I don't know whether that was a good choice of, uh, of shots to try and head back. Uh, grazed off the top of uh, the defender and uh, went clear past the end line. 11-15 here, time remaining in our first half. And the first time from the corner come the day school Eagles. Mentioned 0-5, but involved in some close games. Like we said, that Castle game was a lot closer than 5-1, for most of it anyway. They were blanked by Harrison 4-0 and just lost to Henderson County 3-2 and modern day 2-1. Back in front, Day School looking to tie it up at one. Beaten in the sixth minute again, Robards has his third of 94. Mossbacher trying to feed it back also on the wing. Trying to find Travis Hudak. Hudak and, um, like I said earlier, uh, West Burns is going to get their share. A lot of good goal scorers. I think there are more individual goal scorers this year with the Bears than I've seen in the past couple of years, and of course, that's a plus. I mean, take a look at the roster. For the most part, you've got uh, Nick Lannard, who's going to get his. Brother Mitch already has four. Wes Burns. Mossbacher. Robards now has three. So a lot of good goal scoring opportunists on the team. Chance again. The turnaround is a goal. Up and over the head, really tough to beat. Another for Mitch Lannert, it's his fifth. 
talk about a nice setup and uh, Lanner with his back to the goal when he took control of that ball and uh, just turned and fired a, a quick shot and uh, caught Ellenstein off guard. In the 30th minute, Central on top of day school by a score of two to nothing and goal number five for Mitch Lanner. We'll take a break in this game being brought to you in part by Raven Tire. You're watching high school soccer Thursday night on TV 52. Raven is where the Tri-State goes for quality tires and friendly service. Raven has the Goodyear tire for you, or your family car, or your pickup truck. Raven is the Tri-State service leader, and our certified technicians can do everything from brakes to computerized alignments with a nationwide guarantee. One of the most devastating of injuries is that to the spinal cord. Victims of serious spinal cord injuries are usually faced with staggering medical bills, significantly impaired earning capacity, and their quality of life is never the same. The attorneys at Robert John & Associates utilize experts to determine future needs. If you or a loved one are one of the unfortunate victims of a spinal cord injury, call us at Robert John & Associates for a free consultation. Well, Mitch Leonard against Central on the board uh, a second time here in the 30th minute. Right now, the Central Bears over the day school Eagles by a score of 2 nothing with Warren Dispa. I'm Darren Smith. 2 nothing in favor of Central, and here come the Bears again. Kegelman again in the back. Just a blast to the outside to save for a while. Three Bears moving right up the middle inside the 18 that time. That's right. Once again, uh, day school uh, not uh, defending uh, the uh, the deep corners, allowing Central to uh, uh, beat them uh, up the field to the ball. They take control of it. Doesn't take much to get it centered if nobody's covering you, and that's uh, resulted in the, uh, the two goals that have been scored so far this evening. Right now, an official timeout on the field. That is the uh, second ball again that goes up and over the fence into the Harrison baseball field. So for the second time, they had to stop and delay. Clock stop with 8.52 here in this first half. Central on top of day school, 2-0. If you're joining us late on this Thursday night, tomorrow night, back out at Wright's High School, another weekend in the bowl. Wright's and Harrison tomorrow night. In high school football, modern day and north on Saturday. Kegelman again, just to clear. This one is knocked forward. A couple up, including Batista. Batista actually maybe trying to connect with Nathan Sharp on that far wing. Central again wins the throw into the far side. Lobards boots it back with three up here for the Bears. Probably put somebody's shortstop back there to snag these balls that go over the fence. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Ozzie Smith. He's, he's available for the yeah. moment. <laughs> Isn't he? Back again come the Bears. Chance again for Nick Lannert. Lannert, Hustler, works it again to that far wing. Has four in front. Drops it nicely. Trying to find room. He had Mossbacher up. Third time right there. White time. Nathan Sharp up the far wing. Three up here for day school. Four back for the Bears. Three splits at this far side. Got a long ball across it back in front. And that is uh, Adam Congleton, the only sophomore starter of the Central Bears. And for the moment, it was the lone back through the middle. Congleton a second time. Off to the near touch. Central the last to touch. And the throw in awarded here to the Eagles. Well, day school with an opportunity for the throw in deep in the uh, central defensive zone. Let's see if they can move it in towards the goal. Beaten twice in the 6th and 30th minute. Day school right now trailing the Bears by a score of 2-0. Two, two in, two out here for first-year head coach Masood Kasari. And Ben Sharp back in. Mentioned the four-year starter. Sharp is joined with uh, Mike Williams. Good three-sport athlete, by the way. Also, Mike Williams, the sophomore. Yeah, Williams also playing uh, that of basketball, so we'll see him again. And, uh, and I say he's a pretty good golfer. You know, the, the schools don't keep track of that, and, and they don't uh, send it out to the media that much. But uh, in doing the games that we've done in soccer, uh, as you were mentioning, uh, the athletic prowess of the players that are on the field, it seems like maybe soccer may field more multiple sport athletes than uh, maybe any of the other uh, bigger sports, quote unquote. Bigger meaning uh, they just make more money doesn't mean that they are uh, any more or, or less exciting. Well, you look at the soccer player, which I have said uh, before is going to be um, one of the best conditioned athletes. You're running, as we talked about, miles uh, the other day in the case of an 80-minute game. You've got to be speedy. Therefore, you have a lot of track and cross-country runners here. Um, you've got to have good legs. You have a lot of tra track stars and um, also find little things to do in the springtime. We've also got a couple of baseball players on either side. They drop it back to the outside. 
that, including baseball player Moss Parker. Moss Parker has one alone in front. Good control again by Matt. The cross in front and the missed header. Another good chance here for the Bears. Wes Ivy. They say probably the best future prospect here for the Bears in his first appearance. A true thinker on the field in Ivy. Ivy wears number eight for the Bears. Up through the middle. Day school has again one on either side to go to. They try to feed Ben Chase. Chase is able to knock it down here again. Ivy. As Ivy keeps it in front of him. Ivy almost had it a second time. Almost stayed with it and took it away from Jay Day. A lot of people high on a kid they call Wes Ivy, just a sophomore. And Central is uh, respecting uh, the uh, day school goalie's ability to defend uh, the extreme angles. Uh, they've had a couple of shots that uh, would have been uh, well off to the side that they uh, chose uh, to try and dribble out of traffic and uh, maybe take control of it again and then uh, recenter the ball. So, uh, right now, Ellenstein is uh, shutting down just about everything that's coming from uh, from the uh, shots uh, from a, a bad angle. Yeah, like I said, Ellenstein, uh, for the most part, is going to see a lot more work uh, in front of him. Like I said, some 80-plus saves just coming into game number six. On the outside, Ben Sharp, the four years starter again, tries to get it back to his brother on the far wing. Day School works it in again, dangerous on top to let it go wide that time of John Broderhausen. Best chance for Day School in the past 15. Right, first opportunity that Day School had with a, uh, a kick on goal. Both uh, other uh, goal attempts have come off of headers from uh, uh, centering passes and uh, also one uh, from a corner kick. 4.35 here left in our opening half. Day School and Central on this Thursday night. It will come from the goalie box. Right in front of Broderhausen. Again, Brandon Robart. One of the co-captains here for the Bears in 94. Try to connect the pass. Way up field again in Dan Hatt's second appearance. Second call for Hatt. Slowed down nicely by Leonard, and they try to leave it here. Memmer just taps it in that time on Allen Stein. Jeff Memmer conditioned hard over the summer, and according to head coach Greg Harris, they say that Jeff Memmer may be uh, in the best shape of everybody on this team. So we'll keep an eye also on number nine Memmer. Off to the near wing, Sharp again. Sharp busy here in the past couple of minutes, and the ability for Day School to do exactly this. They're working it more and more right up the wing. That's right, especially uh, to the left side. They've seen uh, some success there in the last couple of minutes and uh, seem to be putting a little bit more defensive pressure on uh, on Central as they uh, advance the ball across midfield. Central controlling midfield, so they school things. Why not bring it up the wing? They've had good success here again in Ben Sharp. That is Sharp in your pitcher, and Sharp has it taken away by Robards. All Robards can do is clear, but credit Ben Sharp now three times in the past couple of minutes right up this near wing. Another throw in for day school and I'm sure that uh, they would like to uh, to get on the scoreboard with the goal before uh, the first half ends. 315 here left to play in our opening half on a Thursday night. Central's next televised game will come on October 4th with the modern-day Wildcats. Modern-day in action tonight with the Harrison Warriors. As mentioned, Day School returns to TV 52 on September 19th. So they take on the Huskies. Day School again knocking on the door for another, or at least another tester on Broderhausen. Their best chance actually was just missed wide. Another on a deflection in the opening couple of minutes. Jeff Memmer trying to work it up here to Dan Hat and Hat <laughs> only able to just dump it in off the near touch and it works back for Evansville Day School last exchange both players actually uh, overran the ball and uh, uh, Central was able to get back to it a little quicker and uh, kicking it out of bounds Day drops it back again to Adam Ellenstein 2.15 here left to play in the opening half. 2-0 Central again if you're joining us late on this Thursday night. Off the foot that time of Jeff Memmer. They say just a good rounded soccer player and can play just about anywhere on the field. And getting my first look at uh, Jeff Memmer on this night. Memmer in his senior year. And Broderhausen will start the Bears back up. Bears again trying to go to 4-2-1 and one in day school looking for their first victory in 94. Oh, crowd there actually through the middle. And hat. Hadden Lawson tried to bring it right back inside the 18. He tried to outfake that time West Ivy, and it'll be few from what I hear. It'll be able to do that this year. Member again. Trying to work. Member trying to drop it right back here in Nick Leonard. Leonard and Dave that time. A little push and shove inside the 18. And Dave probably got the worst of that one. And they're going to call the foul. Probably rightfully so. Yeah, grabbing on the, Nick Leonard. Grabbing the 
grabbing the jersey. That's going to go against uh, day school. That surprised me. I thought for a moment that Lannick was the one. Actually, you always, you always mentioned you don't see the first guy yeah. doing it, you see the second. Maybe that was the case. Yeah, you can see Lannard's uh, uh, jersey, his shirt, uh, come away from his body as uh, uh, the uh, day school defender grabbed it. Good yeah. chance here for the Bears. Central has three on the outside post, one on top, and Adam Congleton, and one of three here. Leonard in the back here, along with Jeff Memmer. And again, one of three coming up. Cross back in front, chance for the header off the crossbar. Second time, Congleton also right there. And the best chance for the Bears, that would have been a nice goal. At uh, three uh, central players on the... Uh, on the free kick there and uh, kick it through the legs nice fake out there and then the uh, person that originally looked like they might kick the ball then set it over and uh, well, that header did not miss Tom much. good chance for the bears on the free kick we're inside of 20 seconds in this first half bears up two nothing will take the halftime lead try to add one more to that one tripped up at midfield and actually slow to get up is that of honey good johnson it happens right here uh, at the break as the final seconds tick away that's going to do it for our uh, first 40, and Warren, you were here for most of it. <laughs> Not a bad first half. I missed, what, 30 seconds? That's about it, yeah. yeah. One half of the book here at Coke Soccer Field on a Thursday night. It is Central and Day School. High School Soccer Thursday night continues after this timeout. There's a notion going around that in business today, the only thing that matters is price. We think service is equally important. James Will Insurance. Writing property and casualty insurance for your business is only a part of what our business is all about. James Will Insurance. Although back injuries are probably the most common type of injuries people receive, they can also be one of the most lingering of injuries. Fortunately, we in the Tri-State have many competent physicians who treat neck and back injuries. Even so, treatment can often be prolonged and expensive. Robert John and Associates have represented neck and back injury victims for years and understand their unique problems. If you have been injured, call us at Robert John and Associates for a free consultation. Well, the Central Bears lead the Day School Eagles 2-0 after the first 40. Day School better or more potent than that second uh, 20 minutes, I think, but uh, Central has the lead 2-0. Yeah, and really, Day School uh, should be happy that they're not down 4 nothing at this point. Uh, Lannard has just been going nuts on them. He has his teammates to thank for all the, uh, the centering passes, and his teammates have uh, Day School to thank for not covering them on the wing. And West Burns also a couple of good opportunities right there on the wing. I mentioned Burns and also uh, Robards, who got the first one, and Mossbacher on the other far wing. Like I said, a potent attack this year for the Central Bears. Yeah, Day School is going to have to talk about uh, their uh, defensive problems here at the half. Uh, they're going to have to adjust, and uh, they're going to have to really uh, attack Central uh, at, at, uh, at midfield and, and uh, hassle them all the way up. Uh, right now, Central is, uh, is advancing the ball up the wings uh, almost um, uh, undefended and uh, getting the ball deep in the corner and uh, either trying to center it or dribble it out uh, of the pressure that finally catches up and then get the ball centered, and that's uh, where the pressure is occurring right now. Actually, that's also been the case for when Day School had their offensive attack going at times. I mentioned several times, Ben Sharp right up this near wing and several times closer on Broderhausen. That's right. The threats that Day School have mounted have primarily come from uh, corner kicks, and uh, uh, every once in a while, Central will kick the ball uh, across the sideline, and they'll get a throw in. Uh, but two headers and only one kick on goal so far in the game. Right now, Central leading Day School 2-0. Second half action on this Thursday night of high school soccer. It continues after this timeout. The Tri-State rides on Raven. Raven is where the Tri-State goes for quality tires and friendly service. Raven has the Goodyear tire for you, or your family car, or your pickup truck. Raven is the Tri-State service leader, and our certified technicians can do everything from brakes to computerized alignments with a nationwide guarantee. Since 1913, our family helping your family with purchasing a home. 
Since 1913, Helfrich Insurance has been the independent agent for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. For a fast comparison quote, call the Helfrich Agency today. Good protection and prompt claim service. Helfrich Insurance, coverage you need at a price you can afford. Tonight, again alongside Warren Disler, I'm Darren Smith, Central Bears, and the Day School Eagles, second half action about to happen in front of you, 2 nothing in favor of Central. That gives uh, Day School a couple minutes to sort things out here, and we'll see whether or not uh, they were able to adjust defensively from uh, what was occurring in the first half. And uh, you know, obviously, they, 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 their strength may be uh, a little stronger up the middle than it is uh, as it graduates to, uh, to the end. But, uh, well, they need to start putting pressure on the sidelines uh, a lot further up uh, the field than uh, they've been allowing center to penetrate. Yeah, like I said, I think um, day school's best minutes in that first half may have been um, maybe that, that, that third 10-minute stand that they were out beaten or outplayed, I should say, in the uh, opening 20 minutes, but they came through strong nicely maybe uh, three-quarters of the way through in that first half. Central first on the drive there, and the throw-in coming for Robards. He has the first in the sixth minute. Lannert in the 30th, and again where we stand, 2 nothing in favor of the Bears. So the throw-in working itself inside the box. You've got three on the outside, and to try to create more of a problem in front of Adam Ellenstein, who, uh, by the way, he's given up two goals, but uh, has held his own nicely, and he'll have to throughout the remainder of the season, apparent in his first uh, five games here so far. Now let's see if Central doesn't uh, adjust offensively, uh, knowing that uh, day school is going to have to put more pressure out on the wings. Let's see if they uh, don't try and bring the ball up the center more often like they did uh, in uh, the last encounter. 39-10 here, and actually just underway in our 41st minute on this Thursday night. Central again trying to control as they will. They tried to leave it there for Robards as Day School punched up through the middle. Off to the wing again, and Day School read that one nicely. Actually, nice job either side for Ben Sharp. Sharp tried to center the ball, trying to find Honey Good Johnson. And off on the far wing. Watch West Burns now on this wing. And switched him with Burns in front, and a header now in front as it trickles in on Ellenstein. Burns on this wing, and a Mossbacher on the other is going to give not only this keeper, but keepers fits this year in 94. Well, Central doing a bang-up job of uh, getting that ball centered just about on every possession. And uh, if that continues, we're going to see a repeat of the first half. Again, Mossbacher here on the near wing, right on the touchline. Almost lost that one, but Mossbacher kept it in front of him. Mossbacher across in front, three there for the Bears. Header missed on top, and back it works to midfield. The loose ball again as they continue to come. Time and time again, Congleton. And loose in front, Robard lets it go over the crossbar. Boy, the way he put his foot into that ball, it uh, caused it to, uh, to hook to the left, and uh, Ellenstein had to do everything he could to get over to the corner. But the shot missed, but uh, if that would have been about a foot and a half more to the right, that could have gotten in there. Robards again, three goals in 94, as mentioned the co-captain. Um, and they say maybe a college prospect. He could play on the next level if he steps up his game just a little bit more. Of course, Robards also a basketball player with the Bears. Connect the pass here to Mossbacher. Mossbacher drops it back nicely. A lot of open room here for the Bears, and they take advantage of that. Robards here through midfield. Band on the shot, picked it up second time. Travis Hudak. Hudak with two up here again, including Lannert. Lannert looking for his fifth, roaming right around in front of uh, Adam Ellenstein. And if you notice, Central now bringing the ball up dead center just about uh, every possession if they take charge of it uh, back in their uh, own defensive zone. So I think they're anticipating uh, day school looking to the wings, and they're going to adjust by uh, bringing it up to center of the field. Robards not bad at all again on that far wing. Uh, I mentioned how much they were controlling the midfield, and as day school bunched up, it seemed in the midfield, yeah, they open it wide open, and they're taking advantage of that extra room they have. Wide open soccer at times, and there's not another central bear, but another a little bit further up. Into our 44th minute. Ellenstein shuffles it off here through the back. And day school again to bring it up the near wing. Trying to stay with it. If you have three bunched up right in front of you, and if they're trying to be able to find Sharp up the wing, look up by Mossbach, resulting in another central throw in. The throw in that time again by Aaron Beck in his senior year. Again, the three sport athlete. Go, 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 Back up the near wing, Day School looks for their first attack here in the second half. Central answering either call. Beck again goes across and through the back to Congleton. Chance again for Day School. They may have their first. Too hurried to get back. And a chance for Good Johnson. Again, he lets it go and two come in front of him to block Good Johnson in his best opportunity to find his first goal. 
Well, he was being uh, patient. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Good Johnson? Good Johnson. G-U-D-J-O-N-S-S-O-N. -S Funny. Uh, very patient. Uh, did not uh, take the uh, the bad angle shot. Instead, uh, tried to dribble back around and uh, waited just about a half second too long because Central was able to recover defensively and get a couple players on the ball. I would say Honey and definitely Paul Batiste are your best players here for day school. Chance again in front, up and over, and having to reach Roderhausen. He had to hop high for that one, and if he didn't, it was too open on that far wing, including Wussner. Yeah, if he would not have timed that jump as well as he did, uh, that ball could have gone right over the tips of his fingers, and someone was there for a header. Chance again for the Bears. They'll drop it back to Robards, and Robards, plenty of room to work with, just shuffles it off again to Member. Member has one or two open on that far wing. Take advantage of what you can. Again, Wes Burns colliding that time. Wes Burns in J. Dade. So the first corner here in the second half of the Central Bears, and it belongs to West. They'll have three in front of the box. That's in front of the six, and two on the outside. Bears again waste no time. In front, bend on it. Robards left there for him. He lets it go on the crossbar. So another chance for Robard. That's his third shot on here in the half, and that one just hits the crossbar. And the second shot uh, on goal by Central tonight that just barely misses by uh, tipping the crossbar. The last one was a uh, was a header in the first half, and uh, they're, uh, they're getting close. And like I said, what impresses you so much about Central is they really do have some goal scorers this year. Burns is going to do a lot of scoring. Lannett's already proven. I think before I said he was going to get his fifth, he already has his fifth. And that came in the 30 minute, 30th minute of this game. Now Travis Hudak, like I said, following in the footsteps, so to speak, of his brother, has already three. Moss Parker, Robards, some great goal scorers this year with the Central Bears. They work it back up through midfield. Drop it back. That was actually Remley. And Remley trying to find extra room on the far wing. Try to work it again in front with the header goal. That looked good. A nice one set up from the far wing. You're waiting for one to come from the wing. And that one did just that. I say, how far out was that header? That's about the, the longest one that we've seen. That had to be uh, pretty close to what? Maybe about 16 yards out on a 45 degree angle. And, uh, Obviously, uh, Ellen Stein not expecting a shot coming uh, off a header from that distance and uh, was uh, sitting back right there in the goal. So Wes Burns has his fourth of the year. We'll keep it here. And now 3-0 in favor of Central. Goal coming in the 47th minute. And again, the Bears uh, look good. You set up that, you work on that in practice, have to set up routine goal. Yeah, that's just about every team that we've seen so far in our telecast uh, have uh, different styles and uh, different aspects. Uh, with Castle, uh, you know, a real disciplined team pass as well. And, uh, bossy a lot of uh, weight and uh, uh, some big kids in the defensive end in uh, central boy they know how to use their heads on the far side here comes central again central in front now three nothing on the far wing west burns looks for a second burns has a chance of work goes over the end line they're gonna say goalie ball so back it goes to Adam Ellenstein. 3 0. The Bears goal is coming 6th, 30th, and 47th minute. And the Bears again up 3 0 on the day school Eagles. Back to the midfield. Burns. Probably thought he should have had that one. And a nice move on the far wing is back on the Eagles. Let's try to dump it for Batista. Batista back there. And so is Tim Remley. You see, he's a leader of the backs this year. Adds a lot. Remley. May have pushed one off and may have got caught. That may be our first card. Remley actually knocking over Wussner. That, uh, that call by the official that was about as far away from uh, the play as could possibly be, coming from uh, clear over here on the right wing. Well, no cards, just a free kick here for day school. On the push, back on the outside, header off by Robards. Nice play by Lander to drop it back to Brandon. Brandon has a couple up in front of him. Actually, three in front of the play, including Leonard. On the far wing, Wes Burns now four up for the Bears, including here, Moss Parker. Moss Parker goes wing to wing. Wes Burns going in there with Jay Dade. Far wing, Dade and Burns, and all Dade can do is just clear over the far touch line for the central throw-in. And how critical a defensive error can be. Uh, we saw him in both directions. That time, Day, uh, uh, Central uh, overrunning the ball, allowing the day school to advance it all the way up into the corner. And then a uh, bad centering kick by, or a bad free kick by day school allows Central to take charge of the ball. Bears up 3-0 on the Eagles. Tomorrow night, high school football continues. Back out in right ball with the Harrison Warriors and the Wright Panthers. High school soccer's next telecast. One week from tonight, it will be a good one between Harrison in Castle. And where are they going to put everybody? 
Yeah, that's going to be, uh, I think, a problem. You're going to have a big crowd out here next Thursday night. It may be a battle of two unbeatens if things uh, stay the way they are. Day School trying to work it back up the wings and a good chance again for the Eagles, but you got to come between two. Nathan Sharp beaten by two, and you had two back there, including Remley. Remley potent as of late. And I mentioned he's a leader of the backs this year. Kind of controls out of the backs, and you watch him work it up to the middle. Good ball handler. I should say good dribbler. And um, he's going to add a lot. It's an already established um, central veteran lineup. Again, a miss header uh, allows uh, Day School to take charge of the ball offensively. And uh, that attempt to get it deep into the corner results uh, out of bounds throw in for uh, Central. In the throw in coming for Matt McCormick. Well, McCormick had the last one. McCormick has a sophomore who's just been brought up uh, from the junior varsity. Big and physical kid, McCormick. Well, add a lot to this, like I said, established central veteran lineup. Here is Mitch Lannert. Lannert again, now looking for goal number six or two today. Lannert trying to go through another. Lannert that time on Josh Brown. There's some size for you. And the kid of Brown. Lannert that time trying to work his way around him. And Ellenstein again has it back inside the six. Of course, the benchmark of uh, goalie kicks has to be Haney from Bossy. I've never seen anybody put the ball uh, at a distance that he can. Yeah, Matt Haney is definitely the best. He's established himself as the best. I think you knew that coming in. He was probably the, the best last year. Like I said, he's seen a lot of work in his years with Bossy when Bossy wasn't always that good. A chance again for the Bears. Just over your head and Hudak right there. Hudak and Leonard drive and just misses on the far post. Leonard looking for his second and goal number six here of 94. And trailing uh, central offensive player just about two steps off that or else it would have been a nice centering pass even though it was uh, aimed at the goal. This is the, I think, the best central has looked so far in this game. Definitely the span of the last 10 minutes or I guess actually you can say as this half began. Could be an error on day school's part trying to uh, bring the ball up from uh, deep in their own zone. This time it's Kegelman. Doesn't want a long ball out of there. Now just a short pass to the wing. Try to center the ball. This has been a problem, but that time they connect to Honey Good Johnson. Trying to dump it back in. He had open only for a moment. Nathan Sharp. Day school stays with it. A couple through the middle. Three on two for the moment. Broken up again by Remley. Remley looks good. Tim again tries to clear it up and one more pass. Almost got it to midfield. Through the back again in Congleton. Congleton, Remley. Two right there. And here's Nathan Sharp with some extra room. Sharp was, well, doing the obvious, trying to drop it back on the wing. He's trying to find uh, Brother Ben. The Sharps almost connect that time right here in front of us. That time, the official almost getting in the way. Just like any sport, the official, uh, if hit by the ball, is considered uh, part of the playing yeah. field. Yeah, yeah. 17, Mike. Throwing here for Matt McCormick. Like I said, they just brought this kid up from the JV. 28-28, time remaining in our second half, and Central up by a score of 3-0. Header comes right back on the outside, and uh, McCormick trying to save. Would have had the throw-in anyway. We'll have the throw-in again. Officials without flags tonight. Yeah, I noticed that. I think it's more for spectators. Viewpoint than it is for the players. Oh, definitely, yeah. From being way back or pushed way back, although... I like the way they have the seating out here at Coke Field. I think good place to watch a soccer game, actually on either field. Good chance again to up for the Bears. Kegelman, all he can do is clear back to midfield. But it actually turns into a connection pass to Sharp, and Sharp tries to work it up to one of two in front of him. Paul Batista, good speedster here with the Eagles. And Batista has a couple in front, just lost it over the end line. And they say Batista, the last to touch. So back it works for the Bears. Nice hustle there by Paul Batista. That could have gone either way. I think Batista was arguing the fact that he was able to uh, kick the ball before it hit the end line and put it off the central defender. Day school looks there. Sharp is so far. And Batista with a cross in front. Chance for the Eagles, but the header is back out the other way. Congleton right inside the six to get it away and never touch Broderhausen. Up and down soccer now all of a sudden as back come the Bears. Robards has two in front of him, including Hudak. Hudak, they try to find Leonard. That is ruled offside. On the last center by uh, day school, they had Good Johnson coming in and uh, just barely missed him on that pass. One uh, central defender just got in the way at the last minute. Yeah, day school looks a lot better now in the past four minutes. See, as soon as you say something, it's like they kind of turn it around. The best day schools look definitely in this second half. Chance again for the Eagles, but they're being beat to the ball. Batista, two good speeds. There? And Batista and the JV player 
with a former JV player and Matt McCormick. Those two came together. Day School going to win that one. Yeah, Batista's seen a lot of action here deep in the right wing. Obviously, they uh, think that they may have found a weakness in the central defense by uh, bringing it up the side. And the last three possessions, Batista has uh, almost gotten loose and uh, able to get that ball center. He gave back to the Bears. So it's twice I've been fooled. I thought I was going back to the Eagles and did not. Back through midfield. Had her back in the territory. One of three Bears up there again in Leonard. Leonard rolls right there for Travis Hudak. And Hudak finds Burns. Burns the latest to score. Burns in the 47th minute. Burns. That time bothered by Jay Dade. And Dade has done a good job on Burns so far. So you want to credit Jay Dade to that aspect. You know, uh, need to point out the really good uh, defensive uh, plays by Jay School because there have been a bunch of them. Robards trying to drop it. Burns right there. Hugging the corner at Ellenstein right there on the uh, near post. Day School with plenty of room here to work it up the wing as Sharp comes again and one of three Eagles in front. So it becomes a race to the ball again. And Nathan Sharp trying to keep it bound in front of him. Batista now cuts back in front. Matt McCormick has been everywhere lately. And over the end line, finally Day School has their corner. So the last two times close on the end line and probably Sharp the most upset with that last one. And he had a chance to work it in front maybe to an open Batista. But they'll bring it to the corner and Paul Batista will take the corner kick. At least in this possession they uh, do come out of it with the uh, with the corner kick. The last three times uh, resulted uh, in uh, turning the ball over to Central. 25.05 here. Time remaining in our second half. And right now if day school stands any chance and like I said they've played their best here in the past 10 minutes. They need to get something on the board in a hurry, down 3 nothing. Header in front, right there, Broderhausen. That's the second, actually, Broderhausen's had to hop up for. No problem inside the six, and a nice kick by Broderhausen, almost to midfield. Header helps it over midfield. There's Dade in the back for day school. Want to dump it back in. Two sharps here, split on your near side, and Batista. One rolling back towards midfield, Mossbacher. And just knock right back on the outside. You don't want to let Central set up when you have three in front, and that's all day school really could do. Well, I'd say here in the second half, since uh, the last goal was scored by uh, Central, Day School has uh, really uh, controlled the tempo of this game, getting uh, more potential uh, shots on goal. And I think that uh, Central has only uh, mounted uh, one offensive threat uh, with a, a shot here, besides the, the goal they scored on that uh, Yeah, definitely lately, too. Day School not bad in the past couple. Win another call here on the near touch. With a throw in again comes for the Eagles. In every, in every game uh, so far on the season that, uh, that we've seen, uh, the team that was down always had moments of brilliance. Just that there was nothing that was uh, consistent. Yeah, late in the game. Though. Like I said, it happened back on Tuesday night, and it kind of happens here as well. Trying to muscle him off the ball that time. And Nick Leonard right here on the near touch side. Great shooter, Nick Leonard, a lot like his brother. Like I said, still looking for his uh, first goal. And I mentioned earlier with Nick, he's still recovering from that knee injury. He's not quite uh, 100%. Into the crowd and back it works again for the Eagles. Knocking on the door for their first. One tap in on Broderhausen. So Day School again has the throw in. Batista now moves inside the box. Three across the top of the 18. Two work themselves inside again in the header. Batista right there, headed back out of the territory again by Aaron Beck. Beck is there, day school between a couple. Nice job again by Moss Parker. Back inside the 18. Only momentarily though, and Robard has controlled his way up and down the middle. Moss Parker behind the play and down. Moss Parker's slow to get up. Actually, Moss Parker's not moving. Down the other end, here's Robards. So one down for the Bears as three come across, and that is over the crossbar. Well, down on the play. Like I said, very slow to get up here. Is that of uh, Matt Mossbacher? By the way, he was uh, grabbing the tips of his toes and pulling them back. That might signify uh, some leg cramps in the cats. As play continues and the playing time uh, advances. Yeah, it didn't look like he got, uh, somebody got a piece of him or anything, and maybe it's something that you and I didn't see, but uh, in front of us, Mossbacher, very, very slow to get up. He's played a great game. As players become uh, dehydrated in the latter uh, parts of the game, uh, that's when you tend to see uh, uh, more of the leg cramps. It's been a warmer one, too. I noticed that, you know, coming in today, it's uh, warmer than our last couple of games. Not as uh, cool as it's been. Chance again for Lannert. Lannert lets it go, but again wide. 
off to the near post. 22-22, that's time remaining here in our second half. It was in the mid-80s this afternoon when this game started. Of course, yeah. uh, in the fall, as the sun goes down, it tends to cool off uh, a lot quicker than it does in the summertime. It's been a weird fall, I think. You know, weather-wise, actually, it was in the summer, I guess you could say, also. A little bit warmer than it's been. Wes Burns tries to leave it in front. Header almost worked again. Leonard looking for his second tonight. Two together back in front. They're coming together hard. It becomes a little bit more physical, I noticed here, in the second half, but they shake that one off. Incidental contact. I don't think that there was any malice on uh, either part. It's just uh, both of them going hard after the ball and uh, got tangled up in the, in the foot department and uh, fell into each other. 21 and a half here. Time remaining in our second half. Next soccer telecast next Thursday night. Harrison and Castle. Like I said, it'll be a good one. To the middle comes Aaron Beck. And Beck had it only momentarily. Day school's favorite side is this near side. That's where they've had the most success anyway. But not to be beat a couple of times. Remley has done just that. That time they get by Remley. Cross in front, but three bears right there. Two eagles in front, but three bears take over. And Nick Leonard to clear here over the near touch side. So you pack it into a, a bunch of bears in front of uh, Broderhaus, and you still can do nothing with it. Well, day school's had a lot of success uh, coming up on the near side here. They've uh, got a couple of centers, got a couple of shots on goal. Far better than they experienced in the first half, so they're going to continue to do so. Day school lets it go and over the crossbar. That's a dangerous one from what, maybe 30 yards out or so? Yeah, that ball uh, took off extremely quickly, and I think it uh, just barely died at the end of its path, uh, allowing uh, uh, Central to get over there and push it up and over there. Yeah, it looked like it started to climb and then dropped as soon as it crossed the crossbar. A couple of tough ones on Broderhausen. If it was over, it's going to be very tough for him to get that one. But it was not, and the score remains still 3 nothing. But day school has done much better here. Even territorial-wise, it goes beyond that. They're controlling the midfield a little bit better and actually easier working it out of their own end. More success, though, on the wings. Wes Burns that time battling on the far side with Good Johnson. Just outside of the 18. They'll drop it back on the outside again in Robards. Robards through midfield. Nice soft touch pass right here. It works to Mossbacher. Mossbacher that time denied. Recapitalizes with three in front of him. And they work it off again to Leonard. Leonard with three in front of him. Leonard had some extra room in Robards. Robards has three splits on that inside as they try to drop it inside the six. Second time it's cleared, and right here again, Mossbacher lets it go, and again, Adam Ellenstein stops that threat. Ellenstein stopping everything coming in on bad angles or uh, to the right or to the left. Uh, he's got those figured out. He just, uh, you can't blame Ellenstein for not being able to grab the ones that come straight at him because a lot of times he's screened or they're perfectly placed kicks. Best chance for Mossbacher. Yeah, Mossbacher's really, really surprised me a great game and Ross Barker the chance to uh, have another great year for the Central Bears baseball team who like I said this past spring is going to be um, very well do very well in 1995 with the ones they have coming back including Moss Barker Moss Barker with the corner watch the header in front just outside the six Ellenstein bothered in front and again the Bears drive it in front of Ellenstein and knocked out by Dade Cross in front again, Ellenstein. has seen the most action, I think, of any keeper we have seen here in the opening three weeks, and he's done quite well. Yeah, a couple of shots on goal, a couple of uh, centering passes that passed right in front of him. Uh, Central uh, had a golden opportunity there with at least three instances, but uh, Ellenstein getting some uh, good defensive help from some of his backs on that exchange. Yeah, Adam Ellenstein now, and this is an amazing statistic if you listen to it, just about three weeks into the season now, Ellenstein has seen well over now 100 shots. So plenty of action in front of Adam. Again, the Bears try to move, and that time denied. Good Johnson just tries to work it out to the wing, and two move up here for the day school Eagles. They're going to try dumping it. Batista again has beaten only once Tim Remley. Remley on the far side. Broderhausen way out of the net. Maybe feeling that time that Remley would not have got there in time. Nice job by Broderhausen. Shades of uh, Matt Haney the other night as he cleared it back to midfield. And well over 100 shots sounds like my golf game. <laughs> I can do that in one afternoon. Yeah, comparisons, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Jazz for the Eagles. Nice move again by Batista. He had three in front, and uh, the Bears want to clear. I thought it went over the touchline. If they say end, it comes from the corner. Nope. It'll be a throw-in. No, 
Not a good golf for Ari Warren, or about as good as me. You go out there and write about 100 shots. Yeah, if I, if I play every day in the summer, uh, when I was a school teacher in the summertime, I used to do that. I would uh, improve my game dramatically from uh, over 100 to uh, under 100. It sounds, sounds like, actually, I'm probably not that good. Miniature golf, no problem. Golf, forget it. By under 100, we're talking like 98, 99. <laughs> I stay over in Westerman. That's a nice little par three, isn't it? Well, I can break 100 there. <laughs> <laughs> 17 minutes time remaining in our second half. Day School and Central on this Thursday night. The weekend begins right here Thursday late night. Here's Dade. Dade has three in front of him. Another good chance for Day School. Two across top of the 18. Four back for the Bears and broken up again by Remley. Remley, four in front to work with. Actually, that slipped right over the foot of Clint Pockets. And the Bears work with three coming. Now three on one for the Bears. And a chance back in front. Here again, Leonard. Nice move. Leonard works it and up over the crossbar. All Leonard as he came in that side. In the six, up and over Ellenstein. Oh, Leonard uh, used uh, a lot of skill in uh, demonstrating his dribbling ability and uh, was uh, covered extremely well by day school, but yet uh, able to uh, manipulate that ball past the defender and uh, had a really bonafide shot on goal, just went a little high. So they're working from inside the six. Looks like right there, um, half in between the um, goal mouth and the six. Another sub in for Masood Kasari for day school. See where England got its uh, revenge on Team USA. Yeah, son of a gun, huh? Yeah. And last night? Only uh, eight players from uh, the uh, Olympic squad were slain. I'm sorry, we'll get, we'll get them next year. Right? Or in, in four years, I guess. You didn't think they were going to beat him twice, did you? Probably not. And England kind of had the home field advantage back earlier this year. I mean, they played the game in New England. <laughs> and they were complaining about our hometown referees. Leonard drives wide again. And Leonard again uh, is trying hard for that second goal tonight. Yeah, highly unusual that England uh, wasn't even in the World Cup this year. Yeah, when you think World Cup, England's one of the names that come to mind automatically. I don't know who the English uh, rooted for. I guess somewhat uh, back to the team from Ireland a little bit. Anybody but the U.S. who, like you and I were talking about the other night, fared very well in this year's World Cup. Header back down, Nick Leonard again trying to find his brother. Hudak also up there in front of the six. And back it works for the Day School Eagles. Again, Day School back on TV 52, Monday night, September 19th, against the North Huskies. Central back on October 4th with the Modern Day Wildcats. 14.50 here to go in our second half. Tomorrow night, high school football continues. A weekend at Wrights Bowl again. It begins tomorrow night at 10.30 with Wrights and Harrison. Both coming off uh, week two losses. One in overtime and uh, Central just besting Wrights last Friday night. Over the end line. Just right there. They trying to save. Actually, not quite over the end line yet. There's one that you folks at home can see better than me. Well, these uh, corner kicks by Central are always dangerous. Their ability to uh, head that ball in makes it dangerous. Yeah, their best goal definitely was um, probably their third. Loose ball in front. Actually never got there. Never got it back inside the six. Central again controlling the wings. Mossbacher. Across the field, through the mid, and here's Wes Burns. Burns comes, Ellenstein, right there. That's Burns right on. That's the third he's had right on on the wing. The other two coming right in front of us back in that first half. That one a little more dangerous in that uh, it was rebounded off his chest, wasn't able to, uh, to hang on to it, but it was a, a hard hit shot. So you got to watch out for those rebounds because so many goals can be scored uh, from the rebound. 13.30 here to go in our second half, and time now starting to really run out on Evansville Day School when you're down by three. So the Eagles begin to clear. Bouncing up through midfield, maybe try one up the middle. They're going to try to force the wings again. Burns off a of foot, left right here again for Mitch Lannert. Lannert has Hudak in front, and a nice jump through the back by Josh Brown. Brown intercepted though by Mossbacher. Mossbacher right there. Mossbacher goes right back to Lannert. Lannert battling Ben Sharp. Sharp, like I said, has been very busy tonight on either side. Sharp actually trying to best two. And that's trouble anyway with Mossbacher right there on the near touch. Robard got a start in the sixth minute. And here again comes Brandon. Robards off a deflection back in front. Chance here for Congleton. Let's it go. Crossbar. 
Left in front again, Leonard. Almost banned on the shot off a deflection. Second time, just in front of Ellen Stein, and they tried hard for their fourth. Third shot of the uh, of the afternoon off the crossbar. Each one of those uh, shots uh, had every chance of going in. Nice hand for the Central Bears as Greg Harris brings out the bench. With 12-20 remaining, uh, these guys are going to be exciting to watch in 94. Good job by the Bears, and they even changed keepers down the other end. Well, you've got the three-goal lead, and uh, you're into the second uh, half of uh, the second half. And why not uh, give uh, some of your bench players and JV players an opportunity to get some playing time? Here? Well, the backup keeper, Aaron Beck, in for uh, Broderhausen. And again, Harris brings out the bench, so some new names for you for the Bears. And we're about to go to 4-2-1, and one. although 11.45, yeah, still some time here left to play, but the Bears up by three. Working through the back, and Wes Ivey making his second appearance. Ivey that time, Remley still up there. Remley tried to leave it for Ivey. Ivey again, uh, just a sophomore. we hear a lot more about this kid uh, as uh, his career here at Central continues. Can we talk about the success of uh, Team USA in, uh, in the World Cup and also when uh, the Olympics come around? See, what happens is uh, kids who are uh, maybe six and seven years old are watching this on TV, and you know, they're going to go out for soccer. Yeah, they mentioned the impact it would have had. It's going to take a while, but uh, in about uh, five or six years, you're going to start seeing the impact uh, on uh, this level uh, almost immediately in the, uh, Get a little bit in the better. junior league. Sure. You and I were talking about the top of the season, how far this actually has become. Nick Lannert, right here. Lannert lets it go, but wide here on the near side. We'll take a timeout. Substitutions on both sides for day school and central. It's the Bears up by a score of 3-0. Time remaining, 10-40 left in our second half. 3-0 in favor of the Bears. We're back with more high school soccer Thursday night on TV 52. An injury can mean the loss of activities you enjoy. The attorneys at Berger & Berger understand how an injury can change your life. For over 40 years, they have provided professional representation to those with personal injury or wrongful death claims. Services will be provided to you at no cost until your case is resolved. Berger & Berger, making a world of difference. If you don't ask, you'll never know how much you'll save at Broerman Chevrolet, especially during closeout 94. Full-size work trucks featuring V6 five-speed air stereo and more $13,299, or S10 pickups with LS trim, two-tone paint, aluminum wheels, and more, only $10,999. And you can still qualify for an additional $500 off selected trucks with a commercial coupon. So come on, ask, find out why. Broerman sells new Chevrolets for less every day. Broerman Chevrolet, Poseyville. I'm Darren Smith with Warren Distler back out at Coke Soccer Field on a Thursday night. It's getting late inside of 10, nine and a half here remaining on this Thursday night. Three nothing the Bears. Yeah, one interesting aspect of uh, how major soccer is, of course, for the World Cup. We had uh, Placido Domingo and uh, Pavarotti here, who are big soccer fans, right, actually yeah. put on the uh, the big uh, uh, opera concert in L.A. All we need to do is uh, get uh, Metallica, Pearl Jam, sure. Alice in Chains involved. And <laughs> it's going to take off here. And it'll fit right in, right? <laughs> yeah, somehow I don't see uh, Pearl Jam opening up a, a soccer match here in the United States. Uh, maybe they will. It just doesn't, doesn't seem right. Alice in Chains? Maybe. 8.50 here to go. Back again come the Bears. Jeff Memmer leads the charge back up. Right back at him come day school through the middle. Want to work on a loose ball again. Tim Remley. Not a bad second half for Remley. Loose ball left in front. Left in front of the uh, six, actually. It just rolled in on Adam Ellenstein. Eight and a half to go. As they work it back through the middle again, in comes Memmer. Memmer. Trying to find room. Quite a twist and turn around that time. Hat in the right place. There's Hat as he lets it go, and that's just wide of Ellenstein. Some of the fans are a little upset. What happened is one of the balls from the other field got on out this playing field. The official picked it up, threw it right into the stands. Almost hit a woman. And another one came back out just moments later, but it's down at uh, this end where there's no action. That could get confusing. I could see where uh, uh, in the heat of the game, somebody bringing the ball up the sideline, another one comes right in there. This could get confusing. Yeah, very. 
Some soccer fans, one ball is confusing enough. <laughs> don't, don't try throwing two in there. Head of that time, Memmer. And back to the middle. Day school, just a little tap there and through the back. Matt McCormick again. McCormick in and out tonight and more uh, action here in the second half. They work it nicely up the wing. Day school looking for their first on the outside. Sharp. Sharp actually tapped out that time by Robards. Robards and Sharp here in the corner. Robards two together. And all Robards could do was put it over the near touch. Day school right now has four inside the box. Batista starts to move in front of the 18. Back again. Day school as they look for their first and 7 10 left and Central gets it out of there. Robards has three up the middle and it's dropped nicely for Member. Member has all kinds of room in front of him including Hat. Hat but forced to come way out Ellenstein and the only thing Adam could do is come out and, and challenge. And he put that ball a uh, long distance downfield. Chance for Ben Sharp that time. Either Sharp tonight. Very effective at times. Believing that hard work pays off. It almost did in their first goal tonight. Now 6.40 left. But the storyline is they are down 3-0. Day school having problems getting uh, corner kick calls. That one could have really gone either way. Say last touch by day school. I mean, I've noticed just calls in general at times. A couple of close ones working the way of the Bears. Robards gets rid of it. Off the foot that time of Matt McCormick and through the middle again come the Eagles. There were three up there for the Eagles and that one's hard off the head. As again, Nathan Sharp tries to work. He goes tumbling up and over. He has really worked hard tonight in trying to win a call. He'll get a free kick out of it. You have to appreciate that of Nathan Sharp tonight. He's playing a lot of hustle on that. This will result uh, in a free kick, which will be pretty much similar to uh, what a corner kick would be. Similar type angle, a little closer in. And about 12 feet further in. Good chance here for day school maybe to get on the board. Down 3 nothing. Five splits of that far side and seven right there for the Bears. In front of the box, header back out of the territory. Right again there is Mike Williams. Had it in front of him only momentarily. And back again work the Bears. Mitch Leonard has three here on the wing. Nice slide tackle that time by Ben Sharp. But the loose ball is picked up by Memmer. Memmer has three on that outside. Just able to dump it in front of Ellenstein. And Ellenstein again will work it back up for the Eagles as on this night they may drop to 0-6 but at a much better second half. Other game is now uh, completed next door. Yeah, the game tonight. Um, Harrison staying undefeated. Beaten uh, modern day three to nothing. So like I said, next Thursday night could set up uh, a meeting of the uh, unbeatens, if you will, between Harrison and Castle. That's when our next high school soccer telecast comes together. Next Thursday night at 10.30, Harrison and Castle right here. Dump it back in, chance again for the Bears. A loose ball right there for him. Hat looking for his first of 94 and back outside the box. Nick Leonard may have fanned on that one, but recapitalized. Here he comes again, looking for his first and 94 to tap it wide. That was about it. There's another kid also who has been everywhere tonight and has come so close on his drives on one side or the other. Like I said, he's going to get his goals. Nick Leonard here in 94. He's a great shooter. I think you were saying that the fans cannot sit along the fence anymore. Can't stand along the fence anymore. Good rule, though. If you, if you bring a lawn chair, can you sit? I don't know. There's no standing along the sidelines. It's going to be packed here next Thursday night, I'll tell you that. Yeah, along the ends, you're probably okay. Yeah, I, I would say so. So bring a lawn chair, huh? Next Thursday night, if you plan on being out here, it should be packed. Yeah, the late game next Thursday night between Harrison and Castle. To the outside, that is uh, Jason Sturmer. First call for uh, Jason. This interesting story about Jason. He's not going to see as much playing time maybe as the others here, but when you're talking about Sturmer, probably no one knows the game better than Jason. For one reason, and it tells you right away that he knows the game, he's, he's a soccer referee. That's quite an accomplishment for a high school kid. Yeah, not at all. He's in great shape. And he'll get his time. He'll get his minutes here in 94. Sturmer wears number 21 for the Bears this year. Keep an eye on Sturmer throughout the season. Sharp trying to get by McCormick. Again, McCormick brought up a couple of weeks ago from the JV. Header back in the territory. Chance for the Eagles. And through the outside, just over the near touch. And a throw in here coming for day school. 3.08 remaining. And another sub in for the Eagles. So Kastari 
going back to his bench. I believe that's Neil's cousin in his first year of playing soccer. Gets into the game. Back outside the six. Headed back out by Robards. Drop on the outside. Two there in Mossbacher. Mossbacher with Mike Williams. Williams almost beat him that second time, but it's Mossbach with a couple in front of him. You leave it on the wing, and back up they work. Try to find room in Lannert. Lannert has two in front of the box. Drop their member right on Ellenstein. Jeff Memmer looking for his first goal of the year. Something else we uh, need to mention, which we talked about briefly uh, at the start of the game, is the size of these two schools. Yeah, like night and day, so to speak. No, no pun intended, like night and day. If uh, if they had divisions like they do in uh, in football. It'd be uh, class A. Be, uh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, about 100 students to pick from, and you bring up that uh, it's not an all-boys school. Mm -hmm. By the way, the day school also fields a uh, girls soccer team who's not doing too bad, by the way, at 94. Final two minutes in this one at Coke Soccer Field on a Thursday night. Day just up and over his head on the push that time. They're going to get the Bears. Actually, they're going to get Dan Hat. That's another one who continues to improve. You watch Hat develop this year. Here's Sharp. Good chance here for Nathan. Let it go and trying to blow the shutout. Second time and right in front of the new goalkeeper of Aaron Beck. Day School almost got a second opportunity off the rebound. Day school. Like I said, a lot better here in the second half have had their chances. Good Johnson on the central foul. Again, back up where it's the Eagles. I don't want to say they've all played central here in the second half, but I'll tell you what, there have been spurts of three and four minutes where they definitely have outplayed a central team. And then keep it in mind now, Central has brought some off the bench. But uh, yeah, a lot better looking day school here in this second half. Well, the other night, they had a better half against uh, Castle in that of a first half. Save yourself, maybe, if this team can put together two uh, good halves. They're not going to stay uh, winless for long. The drive, watch the deflection. Beck right there holds on at four jerseys of blue in front of him. I think Beck likes to give his teammates a uh, heart attack every time uh, he's in goal there with a shot at him. Both of them. Uh, uh, he was able to get him on the second tie with uh, almost two possible rebound shots. 35 seconds here left on this Thursday night on the far wing. Trying to find some room again. Kegelman battling off a couple there. Central maybe trying for a fourth. Came close on several opportunities. Like I said, it's been an up and down game also in the second half of this half. And that's much in part to day school. Much more aggressive. Finding more room uh, up the middle. Batista trying to get that one away from Robards. Inside of now 10 seconds as Robards dumps it in. And right there, Ellenstein. Central will go to 4 2 and 1. Day school drops to 0 and 6. About three weeks complete here in 1994. And that's the way this Thursday night unwinds. Well, I think day school just outmatched. And I think that the. Uh impetus of, uh, of the uh, overmatch here has to do with the pool in which uh, each school has to draw from. You know, day school with uh, the high school program, probably uh, 100 students and under, which primarily means that they have maybe uh, 50 guys to draw from, while uh, Central in football is, uh, is uh, in the uh, upper class, uh, which probably has 900 plus male students to draw from. But uh, I'll tell you what, day school uh, represented themselves extremely well. Not a bad second half for the Eagles, but they fall short here, conceding another goal in the 47th minute and that was all the scoring it took for the Central Bears actually it was decided in the sixth minute when they got on the board and that was all they needed but three nothing a final on this Thursday night Warren and I will wrap it up from Coke soccer field after this timeout I got it I got the car I got the convertible isn't it great I can't believe it I got the loan I got the bank I got the, the way place. some people react to their first new car you'd think they'd gotten a medal for growing up you gotta hear the stereo but with 160 years of lending experience, we don't think of your first new car as a medal. Nah, it's more like a trophy. You earned it. I did, didn't I? And it's also got the power windows and the power locks and the move. Hey, here. life can be fun. At your bank for life, Old National. Mention pizza, and one name keeps coming up. Tironi's, for years known as the city's best pizza. With two locations, Tironi's is the perfect place for groups of two or 52 to get together for great pizza. Come enjoy Tironi's appetizers, sandwiches, or their famous 29-inch party pizza in a warm and relaxing atmosphere. No time to dine in? Why not call Tironi's for a carry-out order? Both locations are open seven days a week. The next time you go out to eat, remember Tironi's pizza. It can't be beat. 
Well, Central over day school, 3-0 on this Thursday night. West Burns uh, cinches it in the 47th minute, the third of the three. And um, not a bad uh, shooting team you guys have this year, like you and I were just talking about. it. You guys got some goal scorers this year. Yeah, they're passing a lot, and the sophomores and juniors are coming through. And they're just, once we get it all together, we'll be really good by the end of the year. Wes, let's talk about the three weeks, though, so far. You guys pick up your fourth win. Uh, you beat a day school team, which may have been expected, but uh, you guys looked good out there, and I know that's just as important. Yeah, we had two tough games at the beginning with Memorial and Castle, but I think we're coming along, and by the end of the year, we'll be ready for them. You guys also have some speed. I thought you were speedy last year. It continues here in 94, so it seems. Yeah, we, we've done a lot of running before the season, and I think we're as fast as any team here. How about yourself? You had a couple of chances, and only scoring the goal, but you had uh, some nice drives from either wing. Uh, I don't know. That one shot was nice pass by Brandon, but I owe all that to him, and that goalie had some good saves. And we all have a lot of shots, and I hope we can keep that up. Wish you guys look good tonight. Go enjoy it. Thanks a lot, Darren. I'm Darren Smith. We wrap it up from Coke Soccer Field after this final timeout.